What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Whitney Kilgore and on this channel, I talk a little bit about faith, entrepreneurship, and just trying to live for Jesus in 2023 and become the best version of myself. If you are interested in any of those things and you're on a mission to just live life a little bit better every day, make sure that you subscribe and keep watching. All right, you guys, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, to all the um, ladies who have a motherly spirit. Maybe you don't have any kids physically, but you are a mom spiritually. We appreciate you guys too. I wanna give a big shout out to my mom, Tracy Coney, for just, just handling motherhood, okay? I thank you, mama, for loving me, for having me, for sacrificing things that you probably would have done just so you could bring me into this world. I thank you for that and I honor you and I thank you for being the best example that you could be even though you didn't have that example growing up. You showed us love, you showed us compassion, you told us how to have empathy for other people and how to just, you know, do right by people and I appreciate you for that and I love you for that. I love you, girl. Okay. <laughs> I want this video to be a reminder of how much value there is in being a mother, how much pride there should be in being a mother, how much purpose there is in raising children. Now, while there is so much honor and glory in being a mother, there's also a lot of struggles, disappointments, and situations that make you, you know, a little bit discouraged in motherhood. And I just wanted to encourage you guys that that's okay, that we are going to get through it. Like some of us may have toddlers and we're going through developmental phases with our kids. Some of us may have adult children. Some of us have teenagers. So we're all going through different seasons and different levels of life and trying to mother and trying to equip people to go out into this world and be good law abiding citizens, right? And so for us, we have an even bigger responsibility because we're trying to teach our sons to be men of God, our daughters to be women of God, and that requires a lot of us. And for some of us, we don't even recognize that we should be even trying to teach them that until later on in life, right? Because we get so caught up and we're so focused on other things. Today, I wanted to encourage you that there is so much value in being a mother. There is still so much glory and so much honor in being a mother. And so if you are in a season of feeling discouraged or feeling like, you know, you don't know how you're going to do this or if you should do this, I want to encourage you that God is with you. God is with you. He's going to teach us how to raise these kids as he grows us, as he matures us. We'll be able to pour that into our children. So I wanted to just have a little talk about motherhood and the phases of it and what I've experienced and what I'm learning and, and, and how I'm just trying to be the best mother that I could possibly be. Um, I think it's important because a lot of times when you're young and you're having sex, you're not necessarily thinking about the potential, the possibility of being a mother, right? You just kind of having a good time. You're not thinking about the, the fact that you could end up pregnant. You may end up giving birth to a child and now you have to raise that child. So as you guys know, I have two kids. I have a two year old and I have a 14 year old. When I had that 14 year old, I was 21 years old. I had no idea of who I was as a woman. I didn't have any values or standards. I really did not love myself. And here I am at 21 trying to give all of this love to a brand new baby, trying to figure out how to raise a brand new baby. And it was so hard. I wanted my son. This wasn't something that wasn't unexpected. We were trying to have him and we had him, but I really did not know who I was. I know that sometimes it can be challenging to pour into a child when you are feeling like you're empty. If I'm being honest with you guys, I really did not have any close influences when it came to mothering and parenting and just being a woman, right? Not even motherhood, but just womanhood. So at 21, I was just figuring it out. You know what I mean? Just trying to figure out who I was and going through so many different things. I never read any books. I wasn't listening to podcasts. I was not serious about church at all. And so I was basically just going off of what I was seeing on TV, what I was being influenced by, and my basic knowledge of motherhood and parenting and how to raise a child. I didn't have a vision for myself or for my child. So it was basically like, we just out here living, whatever happens, happens because there's no expected end for us. And I think once I started getting serious about God, things started to change. And it still took so long in the process of sanctification, like trying to just do better and become a better human being, that things really started to change. 
When my relationship with God started to get it better, I started to, to love myself a little bit more, to have uh, better standards for myself, to view myself as valuable. And I stopped seeing myself as just a baby mama. I started to see myself as a mother. Like, I'm responsible for making sure that this child has character and values and standards and emotional stability. Come to today and Taj got a totally different version of me. And so just the age difference of knowing who I was and who I was not has made a crazy impact on my ability to love, my ability to nurture, to mother. And so I say that to encourage you that if you're mothering and you don't really know who you are and you don't feel like you have a sense of value and purpose, girl, that is the biggest thing that you can do for yourself and for your children getting a vision for yourself. I had somebody like speak into my life that like, Whitney, you gotta get yourself together because you need to show your son what a good woman looks like. And I don't know, it just took on a whole new meaning to me because it's like, man, I don't want him just out here being attracted to anybody because that's normal to him. Like I really wanna show him what it looks like to be a good woman. And of course that didn't happen overnight, but it just slowly became a part of what I wanted to be. And that's really genuinely what I desire to be, not only for myself, but for my sons as well, for them to see what a good mother looks like, what a good wife looks like, what a good woman looks like, so they'll be able to identify what's an I. So if I could encourage a young mother or a mom who's just kind of like, man, I don't know where I am in motherhood. Stuff is just kind of crazy. I don't really, I've never really thought about what I'm instilling into my children, if I'm giving them values and character and training them up to be good adults in life, I want you to start here. What kind of woman are you? You gotta ask yourself, what kind of woman am I? How do I let people handle me? How do I carry myself? How do I think? What consumes most of my brain? How do I speak? How do I dress? How do I um, show up in the world? How do my kids see me respond and react to different things? What kind of woman are you? What kind of mother do I want to be? I want my kids to respect me. I want my husband to respect me and love me. I want them to call me blessed like the Bible says. Like I want them to feel like they can talk to me, to be open up with me. I mean, I understand that there will be some boundaries, but I want them to feel comfortable enough to, to talk to me and share with me what they're going through and their struggles and stuff like that. Like I wanna be the kind of woman that my kids and my husband feel good enough to do those kind of things, to share those kind of things with me. I ain't telling you to worry about what you've been in the past, your mistakes, flaws, and all that stuff, girl. What kind of mom do you want to be going forward? From this Mother's Day forward, what kind of mom do you want to be? And the last question that I would ask is, what do you want your kids to remember of you? What legacy do you want to leave them with? Do you want them to remember you teaching them how to value themselves, how to care about others, and how to be kind, and how not to be no pushover? Do you want them to remember that you instill good habits in them? They watched you be disciplined. Plan. What do you want them to remember of you? And then you have to take a look at yourself and say, okay, what are my actions um, doing right now? Like if they are watching my actions right now, how am I showing up for them? What are they getting from me, from my lifestyle? Not just my words, but what are they getting from the life that I live every single day? Because they see it. So what are they getting from you right now? If you didn't say one more word, but your actions were setting them up for the type of adult would they be? what would they get from you and your lifestyle right now? These are three things that are helping me and that have helped me in the past to just kind of start to move towards trying to be a good mother in my head, okay? Someone else might have a totally different example of what motherhood is supposed to look like and what a good mother looks like. But for me, these three things help me to evaluate whether I am on track to being the mother that I want to be. First thing that I want to encourage you to do is get a relationship with God. Getting a relationship with God has been the most impactful thing in my life, not only as a woman, but as a mom. Girl, just so many things a relationship with God has done. Not only does it show me like, man, how many times I'm, I mess up and God forgives me and loves me, it teaches me that when I get full in myself and I'm angry and I'm upset, I'm reminded to like, Whitney, chill out. You gotta forgive, you gotta let it go, you gotta move past it because that's what God does for you. Doesn't mean I don't get angry, but it means that I have to put things in perspective when they get out of hand, right? And so I'm encouraging you to get a relationship with God. What does that mean? That means like reading the word for yourself, um, 
listening to sermons, figuring out God's purpose for your life, trying to figure out what he expects of us, doing the right thing on a daily basis, making simple changes. If you know you watching stuff or listening to stuff that you know is distracting you or pulling you further away from him, cutting those things off and then starting to fill yourself, yourself with things that are going to encourage you to have a better mindset, encourage you to be more disciplined or have more self-esteem or self-love. All of those things like doing things that are going to please God is what I mean by getting a relationship with him. The more you do that, the more you'll be able to hear from him and things will start to change for you. I think a lot of times we try to do it on our own because we feel like we can, but when we open ourselves up to that relationship with God, he teaches us the fruit of the spirit. As he transforms our mind, he teaches us about patience and long suffering and kindness and gentleness, right? All of those things he teaches us and he changes our behavior, the way we speak, um, all of those things, you know, when we're more intentional about our relationship with him, he begins to change those things for us. And it's not just me. I am not going to curse today. I am not going to, you know, do this wrong thing today. And it becomes like a part of you to not want to do it. The more he changes your heart and your mind about a thing. And so the more you work on that relationship with God, for me, the, the more those things will become a natural part of who you are. I have so many girls that tell me, Miss Whitney, you telling me not to have sex, but my mama boyfriend come over every night he have sex and he beats on her and then she still takes him right back so i really don't i mean like right those are the kind of things that they say because they're watching the behavior they're not listening to her say hey leave that little boy alone he ain't no good for you he lit she's watching you with this man who is no good for you and you keep taking him back you keep letting him slide in all the time and she's watching that saying hmm okay that's how it is I might do it a little bit different, but she's watching your actions and she's taking that as a sense of normalcy. So I wanna encourage you to evaluate your lifestyle and behavior. So if they can talk to you or if they can't, why? Are you creating a good environment? Do they feel comfortable sharing things with you? Are you gonna overreact? Or do you kind of just let them get it out and help them come up with a thought process behind making decisions or just tell them what you want them to do and that's it. I don't know about anybody else, but it just takes so much to bring it down and help work through things that a normal kid, teenage kid will be working through um, without overreacting or popping off sometimes. So give yourself grace, but try. <laughs> and finally, when it comes to evaluating yourself and your lifestyle and your behavior is, are you setting a good example? Like. Are you setting a good example with how you talk to people, how you treat people, and all those things, your attitude, how you respond, how you carry yourself? Are you setting a good example in your daily life with your lifestyle and behavior and all that stuff? Third thing I wanna encourage you guys to do that I have done, and I feel like it's so cool to like watch yourself evolve into that person, because I ain't there, but I know that there are some things that have changed, is write a vision for the woman that you want to become. Write a vision for the mother that you want to become. How does she spend most of her time? Um, what do her kids think of her? What um, are her values and her standards? What's very important to her that the kids already know? Oh, she loves God. She don't play about this. Or, you know, what are the things that you want to be known for by them? What are her values and her standards? How does she dress? How does she act? How does she have fun? Is the only way that your best mom self have fun by turning up and going out and being wild? Or, you know, have you found other ways to enjoy life and to be excited about life that your kids can look forward to when they become adults? Like, what does the best version of you look like as a mother? Now, this next part is for the young lady who is deciding if, or if not, you are going to become a mother. The first thing I wanna say to you is that God is with you. When I was in that very same situation that you are with, I didn't really talk to anyone who could give me any wise counsel. I talked to my friends who were just as gone in the head as I was, and we were only looking at convenience versus purpose versus, you know, what was pleasing to God and all of those things. And so I want to encourage you first and foremost that God is with you, that he will be with you if you have that baby, regardless of what situation and circumstances look like right now, God is with you. I heard a sermon today and it was talking about how Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. It's a scripture that talks about that. And 
when I was going through this decision-making process, I could see like, oh me, if I don't have this kid, I could go to Iraq and make all this money and pay off all my bills and be financially stable and I could do this and do that and all these things. Life could be so much better. And that was him disguising himself as an angel of light to convince me that giving that up would lead to something so much better. Did it? No. <laughs> Not at all. So, but I didn't know any better and I went with what looks like the right thing to do. So I just want to encourage you to really, really take some time to pray about it, to think about it, to talk to someone who has your best interest in mind. So in this sermon, he also talked about how when the angel came to Mary to tell her that she was going to give birth to Jesus, she hadn't had sex, so she was unexpecting the baby. She was young, she was poor, she wasn't married. You know, her and Joseph hadn't been married yet. She wasn't married, so all of these things, when the angel is coming to tell her these things about how good this baby is going to be and what this baby is going to do and who he's going to be, if you allow this to happen, you know what I'm saying? Like you've been chosen to bear this child and when you allow this to happen, all of these great things are gonna come from it. And it was mind blowing that all of the things that, you know, her circumstances were, she wasn't pregnant at the time. She could have been like, oh no, I can't believe this. This is too much for me. I don't wanna do this. She could have done all of that, but God knew she was gonna be faithful and she did. She was faithful and she agreed and she went with God's will and that's how we get Jesus here today. She overlooked all of her circumstances, the uncertainty, how I'm gonna have a baby and I haven't even had sex. How am I gonna take care of it? I have nowhere to, you know, all these things. What is the man that's supposed to be marrying me gonna say when I'm pregnant, he hasn't even had sex with me? She overlooked all of those things because of her faith in God and ended up bringing us the gift that allows us to get for forgiveness for all the things that we've done and have eternal, everlasting life. So I just want to encourage you that regardless of your situation, you might be poor, you might be, um, you know, unexpecting this. You may feel like your life is going to fall apart if you do this or if you go with it, go through with it. But I just want to encourage you that God is with you, okay? God is with you and all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. I'm so thankful that my mom did not listen to the people that told her to abort me. I'm so glad that I'm sitting right here today, having had an abortion myself, and encouraging you to not make the same mistake so that your baby can be here and possibly do something with purpose on this earth because mama got it together and, and went through with it and had 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 the baby and now they're living their purpose and you're walking in your purpose as a mother and doing all of those things. So I just want to encourage you guys in that. Thanks for watching this video. Happy Mother's Day. I hope that you leave this video encouraged to just evaluate where you are as a mom and remember how much how much of an impact you can make. You can raise a child who will make an impact on this top entire world just by being a good person, having character, being kind, having empathy. You have an opportunity to instill that in your child. Um, and so I don't think that should be taken lightly. You are a good mother. You are worthy. You are valuable. We see you when other people don't. Sometimes it's thankless. Sometimes people don't see all the effort that you give, but you are a good mother and you need to know that and you got to keep pushing because it's not just about you anymore it's about you and the children that you're raising and they are watching you so keep doing what you're doing i want to encourage you you are loved by god and your children and there's always room for growth for each and every last one of us so i hope this video was helpful i hope this video was encouraging and i will see you guys in the next one happy mother's day